Hey guys, Garrett here, and I gotta be honest with you, I make a whole lot of money off of mobile homes. Now I have a whole lot of other investments, you know, I kinda get into all kinds of stuff, from single family homes to duplexes, fourplexes, actually own a mobile home park as well, and let me tell you, that's like a cash register. But I also have a bunch of mobile home mortgages that I hold, and I'm gonna be making a bunch of videos as time goes on, telling you how those work, how to set those up, and why it is just awesome. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe. For this video, I wanna show you a home that we just brought into our park just a few months back. I bought it from a gal that was living in another park, and she approached me, and we went ahead and made a deal. I bought the home, and then had it moved into my park. It's a 1979 Detroiter, three bedroom, one and a half bath. And I bought the home for 1500 bucks, but I also had to pay a month's worth of lot rent, which is just a little over 300 bucks. So total, I had 1800 bucks going into this actual home. And then there were the moving expenses, which we hire a company to do that. It costs about 2600 bucks to have it moved from that other park to my park tied down, blocked in place, sewer hooked up, the gas hooked up, and all of the inspections taken care of. So there is some money on it, but that was bringing it into my own park. And for the intents and purposes of this video, I'm really just gonna be talking about that home itself. And I wanna show you what we do pretty typical on the outsides of these homes. Hey guys, wanted to show you the new home that we just brought into our mobile home park. Uh, it's a 1979 Detroiter. Obviously from the color scheme you can tell it's, well, who knows when it was painted last, but it sure looks dated to me. Anyway, the movers got it in. It is strapped in place, blocked, leveled. The electricity is hooked up to it as well as a sewer. At some point, I will get the water put in place. We don't have individual meters that uh, the city monitors within our park, so I have to install a meter at each home. Therefore, we sub-meter everything. Not, not a bad looking home. Here's a look at the other side of the home. You can tell the windows are in pretty decent shape. It's uh, metal on metal, so it has a metal roof and metal walls on the outside. Honestly, these are probably my favorite mobile homes. They stand up to weather pretty darn well. And they just don't rot. Here we are on top of the home. Again, like I said, it's got a metal roof on it. And it's actually in pretty darn good shape. I know that looks like surface rust, but it is nothing to be concerned about. Normally for a home, of this age, it's had about a thousand coats of really bad material. And this one had a coat of something and it actually did pretty well. We are going to recoat it with the stuff that we prefer. This is the material that we use to coat these roofs. It's called duck coat. You can get it at Menards and it is a liquid thermoplastic rubber coating and we found it to be the best that we've used so far. We've tried a whole bunch of elastomeric paint just of, of different grades and all of them delaminate within just a year or two so we haven't had any good luck with those. This really gets in the crevices and it really seals it up plus hey it's white and it reflects the sun's heat. These homes are very notorious for being hot during the, the summer months because again it has a metal roof. This coating really reflects a lot of it. You can feel the difference inside. As you can see we don't work out of a paint tray with this. We just pour a little bit on the roof, spread it around, give it a pretty decent thickness of uh, coating and then we'll come back and do the whole thing a second time. Those two coats really seal it up. I came by yesterday and power washed the roof and the sides of this home to get us ready today to do all the coatings that we're doing. So we're trying to get one coat of duck coat on the roof and I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint the outside of this using a sprayer and Sherwin-Williams paint 
it's going to transform it in just one day. Primary color is going to be gray with a uh, kind of a whitish trim color. We'll come back and hit around the windows by hand. You can see we're starting down the side. It goes fast when you have a paint sprayer. The sprayer I'm using is a uh, Graco Magnum Pro LTS 17. I've had it for, I don't know, eight, nine years. It's been a great machine. Well, I just ran out of paint. The good news is I still have some more. The bad news is it's not here. We were back in business. Hour later, we have the paint, and of course I had to go through the whole cleaning process of the uh, paint sprayer, but uh, sometimes days go like this. Anyway, let's get to it. Well guys, that's it on the spraying. Normally I'd have a shield going around the windows, but yep, forgot that one today too. Anyway, we'll just touch up around the windows, hand paint the trim, and the outside will be done. Plus, one more coat of that duck coat on the roof. So, we're close on the outside. After that's complete, we will get the water hooked up and then the skirting put on and it'll look really good. And here's the final product. After everything is painted, including the body color, the white trim color, the brand new skirting, looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? It sure doesn't look like it's from the 70s more things we had to do we put the deck in place had to build railing around it and of course put brand new steps on it always whenever you make steps use the proper Simpson brackets that you need for it you sure as heck don't want those things detaching or moving around and then of course your railing make sure that you put these no more than four inches apart Pretty nice. One accent feature that we do sometimes is we will actually paint the front door this blue color. It complements the gray and the white, but gives it enough of an offset to make it very modern looking. And if you remember up top, we put two coats of the duck coat coating. Quick tip, if you have a place where you have little holes through this metal siding, you can always caulk it. I use big stretch caulk and it works just fine. And then of course, you know, we painted over all of this metal siding. So yes, you can paint metal siding. You know, I'm pretty amazed at how this home turned out on the outside. It costs about 900 bucks to do everything, which really isn't that terribly bad. About 200 in paint, another 100 in lumber, and then about 600 in skirting. Skirting's just not cheap and it is required, but 
it sure looks pretty good, doesn't it? Stay tuned in the next couple of weeks for an interior before and after transformation. I'll talk about the costs involved in that as well as the work that was actually done. So hit that like button as well as subscribe. Until then, I'll see you next time.